my fellow Dream Chasers and Disney fans across the world, and Happy New Year, guys! Uh, so yeah, this is it, my first, uh, my first proper video for uh, 2021. Um, but of course, it is of course the Kingdom of Isolation. Welcome to the Kingdom of Isolation, guys. Where in times of trouble, why not isolate yourself with the magic of uh, Disney? Now. Uh, so yeah, now, we, now we're starting to get into the proper business end of things. We've finally managed to finish the package film era. Um, oh, there was a bit hit and miss. But nevertheless, today it is Cinderella, released in 1950. And it was make or break for Disney, where if the film wasn't a success, then they would have had to, uh, uh, close the, um, they'd have had to close the studio down and we wouldn't have Disney as we know it today. But of course, with how many films we've had since then, I think we all know how well this film went, uh, did. Uh, so much so, it actually got a live action remake in 2015 and there have been many film adaptations of the Cinderella story. Uh, one of my personal favourites, a Cinderella story released in 2004, but that's not what we're talking about today, we're talking about the 1950 <laughs> Disney classic. But of course, it wouldn't be the Kingdom of Isolation without having a guest to join me. Uh, she was with me previously when we talked about the second ever animated film Disney released, and that was Pinocchio, which you can find around about here on top of my playlist of every film that I have done so far. But nevertheless, the queen of positivity, it's Ellie! She's back! Ellie, welcome back! Hi, hello! Yeah, so, uh, so just so we get this out of the way, how was your Christmas and New Year? Oh, it was wonderful. Yeah, well, as good as it can be, of course. But... Yeah, that makes two of us. Um, yeah. Well, they, uh, well, they, uh, I, I, I got a lot of, uh, I got a lot of Harry Potter stuff uh, from the, uh, <gasps> from one of my friends in Glasgow. One of the things being a Fred Weasley wand. Really? That's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, they also got me a Harry Potter advent calendar as well, and I'm just like. <sighs> And I'm just like, oh wow. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> but um but yeah, uh Cinderella, like I said, this was like I said, this was make or break for um uh for Disney because uh, if, mm -hmm. if it if it, if it, if it wasn't a success then uh, Disney would have to close down and we wouldn't have we wouldn't have the films that uh, we all um grew up loving as kids. Um which, uh, which, don't worry, folks, for that particular era, the Renaissance era, don't worry, I will get to that very, very soon. But we still got a fair bit to go before that. So, um, uh, I haven't actually done this sort of format with this um, for uh, since the very first episode, guys, um, where uh, where I've actually taken notes uh, while watching uh, the film, notes, uh, um, was I notes for the film, some pros, some cons. Um, but uh, on top, but on top of that, uh, I've I've got my scores in. Uh, uh, my guest has also uh, taken notes as well, haven't you, Ellie? I have. Yeah, I'm very excited. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> I, 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 so one th one thing we're both going to be particularly excited about is the possibility of a deluxe edition of Ariana Grande's uh, Positions album. Yes, we're both Ariana Grande fans. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. To say the least. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but um so uh da, 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 uh so yeah that's um so I think we've got I think we've got all bases covered. We've got the notes, I've got the uh, plot synopsis uh in front of me, I've got my scores, you've got your notes, we've we've got everything sorted, I've got my beverages in front of me, don't worry, uh, cause um, <laughs> cause, um 'cause the throat is more than likely gonna get pretty dry when they're uh recording this and uh, moving away very, very briefly, my latest rental from Boomerang Games came through, and it's Spider-Man Mars Morales playthrough will be starting very, very soon, guys, don't you worry. It's on PS4, but when I get my PS5, I'm going to do the game all over again as my first PS5 playthrough. But nevertheless, uh, just so it's out of the way... Spoiler alert, if you haven't seen the film yet, as is part of the course, I have to put the spoiler alert in there, because there's probably people out there that haven't seen the animated version. They have more, they will have more than likely seen the remake with Lily James in it, and uh, Helena Bonham Carter, but 
Uh, we'll get to the re... Well, don't worry, folks. As far as the remakes are concerned, we will get to those eventually. <laughs> I've got I've got this run of pic- Disney films to do. I've got the Pixar films to do. Then I'll do the live-action films as well. So, still a long way to go, folks. So let's <laughs> So, let's go through Cinderella. So, opening... So the opening credits. Now, there's a, there's a few similarities here um, to Snow White uh, right out of the gate. Uh, like uh, The choir singing over the opening credits are pretty much a staple for Disney films back in uh, the day. Because you had Pinocchio, When You Wish Upon a Star, Love is a Song That Never Ends from Bambi, things like Saludos Amigos, Melody Time, Make My Music. Uh, and here we are with that staple... Um, once again, I mean, I mean, if it's a formula that works, why change anything? And uh, there's also some very, there's also a few similarities to Snow White here uh, during the opening, especially, uh, and throughout the film, because uh, you've got because you've got the storybook opening where you've got the the book with the title of the film that we're watching, uh, but unlike Snow White, you actually have a narrator going through the going through. Uh, establishing the characters in the in the opening, uh, and of course Cinder- Cinderella has animal friends just like Snow White, and an evil mother figure just like Snow White does. So yeah, let's see. There's uh, so yeah, there's definitely a lot. There's, let's see. There's definitely a few similarities here with um, uh, comparing Cinderella to um, Snow White. So so what so what did you pick up from what did you pick up from um, uh, were, there, were there any similarities you picked up from uh, Cinderella to other Disney films previously? Uh, for me, because um, I do think they had a lot to base it off of beforehand as well. Like they had obviously had like Pinocchio and um, Bambi and things like that. But mm-hmm. like I think they, I think based it off Snow White, it's nice to have that sort of similarity, sort of you know, sort of base it around like sort of the Disney princess, sort of mm-hmm. you know group so to speak so but yeah pretty much what you picked up on was what i was going to say as well but yeah so yeah um so yeah the um i'll say the I'll say the narrator um which um get to the uh, get to the car boom, boom, boom. you tab open for the cast right so we we get introduced we get introduced to the uh uh the characters uh and of, co- and of course, of course, back then you had um, you had some uh, live act. You had the live action references when they because 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 back because back then the back then they didn't have uh, they didn't have computers. They just had the, they mm-hmm. just had things like the multiplane cameras, which I've mentioned in previous um, episodes. Uh, she had some live action references to draw from as far as um, getting. Um, a true portrayal of as true a portrayal of the character as uh, possible. The narrator was uh, uh, Betty Lou uh, Gerson, and then you've got, and then you get introduced to like the the main four that the, the main four characters that we focus on primarily throughout uh, the first act. Especially, you've got Cinderella voiced and voiced by uh, Eileen Woods who also did the singing voice and then you've got Verna Felton who was the voice of the fairy godmother she's been in she's been in a number of um Disney projects mm-hmm. elsewhere mm-hmm. uh you've also you've also got Eleanor um you've got Ellen, Eleanor Audley who plays Lady Tremaine and then you've got Lucille Bliss and Rhoda Williams who play Anastasia and Drizella, who are the uh, daughters of Lady Tremaine, respectively. But back to Verna Fields for a moment. She was Mrs. Jumbo in uh, Dumbo. She also plays the Queen of Hearts in Alice in Wonderland. And she is Flora from uh, Sleeping Beauty. And also, uh, her final film role was uh, all the way in 1967 when you had Winifred the Elephant. Hmm. Um, so yeah, she she does have a few uh, Disney roles under her belt. Oh, and Aunt Sarah from Lady and the Tramp. So pretty pretty impressive uh, Disney resume, if you ask me. So, 
uh, there, so we've, got, so we've got all that out of the way, um, and it's uh, the rate. The narrator goes through. Um, uh, the narrator goes through the um, the story where you got uh, Cinderella living with her dad, who's um, Cinderella's mum had passed away, but um, her dad married uh, Lady Tremaine, and after after Cinderella's dad passed away, that's when the real meat of the film comes into play, where mm. you've got um, so where it's uh, Lady Tremaine. Uh, essentially manipulating piece by piece, mm -hmm. manipulating Cinderella into essentially becoming a scullery maid, uh, mm -hmm. getting getting her to do all the housework, and that's and that's pers and that is done in, and that is done in possibly one of the um, uh, one of the less subtle ways. Was yeah. it? But um, but but even but I mean. The thing about Lady Tremaine is that she, yes, she doesn't have any like magic powers like the evil queen from Snow White, but even just something as simple as that, e even as something as simple as an evil smile, and the and like and like the um, so like the subtle hints of the um, intimidating music in the background, just subtle hints of just subtle things like that. That's when you. I, that's when you know right out the gate she is just evil personified essentially <laughs> pretty much yeah but um but then then uh, what does it then does it one thing one thing that is definitely um one thing that is definitely relatable for uh, a lot of us even uh, 70 plus years later is that um uh, Cinderella having a dream and that's when we first hear a dream is a wish your heart makes, which which draws more similarities to Snow White with with the uh, with the uh, mm -hmm. the I want song, which is which is what Disney fans have um, called it essentially. Uh, similarities to uh, things like when you wish upon a star and someday my prince will come. And uh, but uh, but the but the relatable thing here is you see the castle in the background, which will be. Uh, Pip, which will be uh, a key part of the story later on. Um, the castle clock chimes. It's morning. Time to get up. Get ready. Get ready for the day. Very relatable for a lot of us. When you when you I say, but but, but, say, but of course they didn't have they didn't have mobile phones back in the day. Uh, but uh, they did. But they would have had alarm clocks. You hear the alarm clock and you're just like, do I have to start the day? <laughs> But uh, but yeah, but I, say, I definitely I definitely find that particular part somewhat uh, relatable for a lot of us. But um, <laughs> but at the end of the at the end of the day, the work at the end of the day, the work needs done. At the end of the day, but uh, my goodness me, um, um, uh, where so where do we get up to? Uh, so one of the, one of the biggest one of the biggest things I gave them. Um, um, uh, another another positive I took uh, gave this film was the fact that um, where you've got uh, where you've got Jack, who's who's one of the mice. Uh, Jack and they find uh, uh, Gus, who's in one of those um, cage traps. I say, thankfully it wasn't one of those Tom and Jerry mouse traps. Otherwise, we'd be having uh, we'd be having like one or two lawsuits with um, with MGM Studios, who made the Tom and Jerry cartoons at the time oh no wait hang on that would be if that would be if um that would be if lucifer was caught in the trap but uh, talking of lucifer um uh clever cleverly describing lucifer before he actually appears on screen how how they describe uh lucifer without actually showing him first i mean that's that's a clever way of that's a clever way of um introducing us to one of the uh, side characters without it, without actually showing him on screen first, and it's, and it's not very often, not very often you see characters introduced like that before they're actually shown on screen. Uh, but uh, the but one of one of the biggest things, one of the biggest things, another big thing I took away from this was uh, the fact that you got um, Cinderella. Um, no. Uh, 
No, I've, I've, I've read my notes. I've read my notes wrong. <laughs> uh, the, um, the bells. I say, it's just like the, the mini, the mini bells. Uh, I mean, uh, have, have you watched Downton Abbey by any chance? I haven't. No, I should I watch it? Uh, well, I say, I say, I say, not only a great show, but it's also, but it's also a, a, a great, a great film that sort of like uh, came out of nowhere. I wasn't anticipating a Downton Abbey uh, film, but, but, uh, but I say, yeah. I say, there's, I say, they have these, uh, they have this like system where you've got like bells for like different rooms in, in the house. Uh, I say, you, you know the sy- you know the systems I'm on about, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's one of those systems, and it's uh, and one of the sisters is. One of the sisters starts ringing their bell uh, while Cinderella's trying to take care of something, and she's like, "Okay, right, okay, I'm on my way." But the number of times all three of them ring their bells—I mean, <laughs> could they be any more impatient? <laughs> but uh, but that works in the film's favor because that just—that's a perfect showcase of just how um, unlikable. How unlikable they are, and Apparently. yeah, and then when we get introduced to Lady Tremaine for the first time, this is when you've got Cinderella coming in, getting breakfast for Anastasia Drizella and uh, Lady Tremaine. When we're introdu- when we actually see Lady Tremaine uh, in her bed, it's <sighs> wow. The music and the lighting for that for that moment. Very intimidating, and that that and that again ties into my previous point of how unlikable these characters would be later on down the road. But um, uh, I don't I don't often bring up these sort of I don't often bring up these sort of nitpicks. But um, while Cinderella's getting her um, uh, scullery clothes on, uh, I actually had the captions on. If I actually, I actually had the uh, subtitles on, but um, bizarrely, as I like to say, this is a bit of this is a minor nitpick for me. But um, the captions show up on screen as Cinderella shivering, but uh, but this, this, this one she's getting washed, but th- thanks to the help of her animal friends. But the problem there is she actually sh- sounds like she's gurgling rather than shivering. I was like, I was like, I was like that's, just, that's just a bit of a minor, that's a bit of a minor nitpick, but uh, but there is, I did pick up on somewhat of a continuity error, as well. Uh, you uh, you got Jack sitting next to the bed in one shot, and then in the very neck, and then like the next shot, he's sitting next to the window, which is quite a bit of distance between uh, the bed. Quite quite a bit of distance between the bed and the window. Uh, I mean, I mean, at, I mean, I mean. Dare I say, at least sh- at least show Jack actually moving towards the window rather than just having that having that continuity error. And I mean, not very often I point out continuity errors in um, in Disney films, but hey, well, but hey, uh, pretty much a first time for everything. Hmm. Um. But then, but then, because I see a lot, a lot of the, a lot, of the, a lot of the cons that I picked up on here, uh, they're just a lot of them are, just, a lot of them are just like minor uh, nitpicks. But um, but this one, I say this one doesn't really make much sense to me. I mean, I mean, why would you put, why would you put slippers on for going outside when you already have shoes on? How does that work? And then it's a case, uh, whereabouts are we? Uh, during the, um, and during all this, getting all the, getting all the housework done, this is when we get, this is when we see, this is when we see the king and the grand duke for, uh, uh for the first time in the, uh, uh, and they are both they are both voiced by Louis Van Ruten, and uh, oh dearie me, uh, 
That's it. That's it. The king, though. My goodness me. Uh, one at one particular point, that's it. the king says, "The king says to the Grand Duke, that, yes, I am being patient.' When when we are seeing the exact opposite of what being patient <laughs> is. I mean, oh dear. As, and <laughs> and the reason for all this is because he. That's because the king is struggling to get his son, Prince Charming, to find someone to marry. And that's when we see the boy. And that's when we see them announce. That's when we see the king and the Grand Duke announce. Excuse me. That's when they announce they're going to have a ball for that night. Now, now this is now. I know this is just for plot convenience, but you need at least a month to get this ball organized. Oh, hundred percent. As, as I like, I say, I say, I say that that's just in. I say that's just in there for plot convenience. But, <laughs> but come on. <laughs> yeah, um, but uh, but say, but say, then we actually see Lucifer. I say, we actually see Lucifer for the first time. And uh, my goodness me, um, just he's just like, yep, whatever. But um, so say what? So while all that's happening, um, uh, the mice getting, uh, uh, getting all the housework done. Um, you get you get classic Looney Tune slapstick between. Uh, Jack, Gus, and Lucifer throughout throughout this portion of the film. Like uh, when you, um, uh, as a, get, while getting all the housework done, like, especially between especially between uh, Jack and uh, Lucifer. But um, I mean, I've pointed this out numerous times when nitpicking uh, Tom and Jerry episodes uh, playlist. Uh, Play this to that up here as well. That I mean, you see whiskers and fur being pulled off Lucifer. Surely any normal being would feel that happening. But again, like I said, that's oh, just yeah. that's just that's just another bit of just another bit of plot convenience when uh, Lucifer is just hunting uh, Gus down, and I'm and I'm just sitting here like, come on, surely Lucifer should be able to feel <laughs> that. But um, but all that aside, like I say, like I say, just that whole, just the just the, the scenes those three have together, just classic Looney Tune slapstick at its finest. But um, uh, one of the next, one of the other things to uh, one of the other things to point out is the um, when you when you see uh, when you see Cinderella cleaning uh, the floor and the stairs, that's when we have Sing Sweet Nightingale come into play and I really like the visual presentation of that song and you've got as you've got Cinderella doing the cleaning the floor and you actually see it uh, happening in uh, the bubbles of the uh, the soapy water she's using as well and on top of that the harmonies I think I mean I mean me me loving my music, shock and horror to absolutely nobody. <laughs> but like, me loving my music, there's just something about harmonies that just gives me chills every time I hear them. Mm. But um, at the end of the, but uh, goodness, but, uh, and then Lucifer, being the uh, being the absolute spoil sport, decides to make a mess. Uh, just gets just gets dust and dirt all over the all over the floor and stairs, and Cinderella's like right. Back to square one. Um, let's see. And then, then some mail comes through about the ball. Um, and from there, we find uh, we find out that every that everyone is invited. And Lady Tremaine says, "If emphasis on if Cinderella." gets all her housework done and she can find something to wear then yes she can go uh, much much to the uh, shock and horror of um, Anastasia and Drizella they're like wait you do realize what you've just said 
But Lady Tremaine, of course I know what I said. I said, if she gets the work done. And she does manage to get, she does manage to get it done. Um, now, the beads and the sash. Keep this in mind for something I'm about to point out later on, folks. Uh, that's used on Cinderella's dress, which looks absolutely fantastic. But um, mm. let's see, the bi one of the biggest things I was intrigued by um, was where well, you've got the mice singing. How would they have done that when they were making this film in the 40s? How would they have done that? I mean, I mean, I mean, they, I mean, I mean, these days you'd have something like uh, you'd, you'd, you'd have you'd have uh, something like Audacity, for instance. Because they uh, go into Audacity. There's a there's a tab that says Effects, and you go change pitch. Easy as that. How would they have done that back in the forties? Because of course they didn't have computers back then. They just had the film reel, the the film reel, the painting, the paint to do all the uh, the artwork, and and of course like the recording booth to do the to do the to do the voice acting and singing, and that would be it. How would they have How would they have done How would they have done those mice vo mice's voices back then? Probably so, probably something I can um, delve into later down the road. Uh, but nevertheless, the dress is made. The dress is made, and um, the beads and sash I mentioned earlier. Um, yeah, um, they get ripped off uh, Cinderella's dress by Anastasia and Drizella, among many other things. They get ripped off it, but come on, what is the point of not wanting the beads and the sash if you're just gonna rip them off Cinderella's dress? I mean. What's the point of doing that if you didn't want them in the first place? <laughs> deary, deary me. But, um... But see, that's probably... But I, mean, I mean, that is without a doubt the lowest point. Oh, that is the lowest point for Cinderella throughout the film. And then we get introduced to the fairy... Uh, the fairy godmother, uh, who I've already mentioned, was voiced by uh, Werner Felton. Um, everything, everything gets sorted out. But um, let's say it's a case. Uh, then, and then, sh and then we get, and then the, she for she forgets she forgets where she's put her wand, and then lo and behold, boom! Because she's a fairy, as if I might there it is. Mm. Doesn't remember the magic words to get everything sorted out, but then, lo and behold, she managed. Lo and behold, she manages to remember uh, the ma She manages to remember the magic words in song form. Yes, I am aware. I referenced Tamatoa from uh, Moana, but uh, but nevertheless, like I said, she goes through the magic words in song form. <laughs> Oh, I, say, I, 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 I definitely need to start. I definitely need to start, start using that one a bit more often. <laughs> but uh, bibbity bobbity boo, that's the next song we get introduced to, and it's it, I say next to, I was like, of all the songs from the film, bibbity bobbity boo is probably the most iconic one from mm -hmm. the film. Because I mean, it's it's one that everybody knows. It's um, uh, I say. Pumpkin into a coach. Uh, then you've got Br uh, Bruno. Uh, I think it's Bruno. Um, pretty sure Bruno is the. Pretty sure Bruno becomes the doorman, and you've got a horse, and then you've got the horse that becomes the um, uh, the. the What's the word I'm looking for? What's the word I'm looking for? The... <sighs> mm. Hang on a second. Uh... Ah, right, right, that right, that's what, right, that's what it is, that's what it is. Uh, pumpkin into the carriage, the mice into the horses, and, uh, the, and, um... <laughs> Uh, 
and and one of the, and one of the uh, horses. I say that in air quotes because the mice because it's actually the mice that are the horses. They uh, they managed to scare Lucifer off with a little bit of bibbity bobbity boo from the fairy godmother as well. Just like see you later, Lucifer. We won't be seeing you again anytime soon. Um, mm. was it, uh, the Cinderella's horse major becomes the coachman. That's the word. That's the one I was looking for. The 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 one that. The one, the one with the reins for the horses. And then you've got Bruno becoming the footman uh, at the um, to like get, get the door open to get Cinderella into uh, the coach. Um, Cinderella's ruined dress becomes. Um, I mean, I mean, all I can say is, as far as trying to recreate this ball gown for the remake, uh, yeah, that must have taken a fair chunk of work to be able to recreate mm. that. But again, looks fantastic, and uh, the biggest, and uh, the I was like a lot of pe- a lot of people have pointed this out regarding the footwear that Cinderella's got, her glass slippers. Would they realistically work? I don't think so. Well, yeah. no. Yeah. yeah, but um, but um, ne- but nevertheless. We we all know what happens at the, we all know what happens at this point. Uh, I say if you if you've uh, if you've seen the film, the remake, or or even seen or even seen the pantomime every December, uh, on the stroke of twelve, spell is broken. Um, and then and then we and then we see Cinderella about to head off to the ball, have a great time, and then the music at this particular point is the same music that was used for one of the VHS trailers uh, on those on those um, uh, Disney VHSs that we used to have as kids. I say it's, this, it's the same music that's used at this point in the um, in the film, which is um, which is clever. Which, uh, I say it, uh, if anything, it, if anything, it helps uh, it helps keep the cost down as far as copyright is concerned. Yeah. I mean, but I mean, of course, back then, of course, back then they would have ha- they would have had to have used um, uh, the music score from the film in in their trailers. Otherwise, um, otherwise the amount of, the amount of money they'd be spending on their licensing just for like one trailer, um, mm. I say it it would have cost an arm and a leg back then. I mean, <laughs> perfect example of that is um, it was there was um, there was a stop motion Paddington Bear. Um, kids show uh, round about the same time but, um, so there, there was one of these uh, there was one of these uh, short specials uh, Paddington goes to the movies and they actually recreated they actually recreated that iconic scene you guys know what I'm on about folks they recreated that iconic scene short for short with Paddington from Singing in the Rain the 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 licensing fees for singing in the rain back then would have cost a fortune, especially especially for something, uh, t- especially for being able to recreate that scene in uh, stop motion. Uh, but but it's it's one of those moments where how how can you not have a big smile on your face when you hear <laughs> singing in the rain and you've got Paddington Bear recreating that iconic scene. But um, but yeah um. I was like, uh, I was like, an- another another minor uh, nitpick. Um, uh, I was like, the person doing the person doing the roll call of all the uh, maidens in the kingdom. For goodness sake, for goodness sake, so work on your pronunciation of Mademoiselle. Um, among 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 one or two other surnames. I said, for goodness sake, work on your pronunciation, please. But um. But then, uh, oh, good, oh my goodness me. <laughs> uh, yeah, there's one particular line the king says uh, that, to the Grand Duke, if anything goes wrong. Um, we'll touch on that shortly. Very, very shortly. But, um, uh, let's see. Um, was it the prince... Rejecting, I was like, I mean, you can you can just tell from everyone, uh, every, every one of the maidens that comes up to uh, introduce this to him, you can just tell from his face that he just does not look interested in 
any of them at all. And yes, that does include Anastasia and Drizella. That is, of course, out of nowhere, in his eyes anyway. He looks up, He looks a little further into the background and he sees Cinderella. Hasn't seen her before. Doesn't know who she is. But uh, then, lo and behold, the king and the duke get the orchestra to... Yes, they did actually manage to get an orchestra. Again, in less than a day. How is that possible? Uh, and then and then we get introduced to the last... I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure this is the last song that's in uh, the film. Uh, so This Is Love. And it is, without a doubt, one of, one of the most beautiful scenes from Disney. Uh, I think... And, the great, the great thing about the great thing about this sort of animation is that while some things might look a bit dated, the animation as a whole still looks great today. Oh yeah. And and then of course we see the and then of course when they when the dance finishes, uh, and of course bearing in mind Cinderella is unaware of the fact that she was dancing with the prince. And Prince Charming is about to see who he actually is. Uh, he's voiced, by the way, folks, by William Phipps. Uh, and, he, and the singing voice for him is Mike Douglas. But um, uh, he's about to introduce himself as the prince. But, uh, but then the clock starts chiming... Uh, the clock starts chiming midnight now, um, and goodness me, the music just really ramps up and in, uh, intensifies. Because um, Cinderella, because Cinderella's just like, right, I need to get out of here now. She she ends up losing one of her glass slippers uh, again. Bearing in mind, glass slippers not very practical, but um, she goes to she goes to retrieve it, but ends up but uh, it's just like I I need to get out of here. Um, stuck, still stuck with one, still stuck with one glass slipper. Uh, the footman is just like, quick, 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 let's go! And they manage to get out before the gates are closed. But, uh, my goodness me, the speed! The guards on their horses come out. I mean, I mean, yes, the horses are black, but even at that, goodness me, the speed they come out! You'd think Cinderella had stolen the crown jewels! <laughs> but, um... No, they, uh, so one one thing I did pick up on um, on future viewings, including including one from earlier in the week, that um, uh, that uh, when I was younger, watching the film, yes, I did watch princess films when I was younger. Don't at me, folks. <laughs> but um, but yeah, one of the, one of the things I did notice is that um, the, on the on the last zoom in. Of the uh, the clock striking twelve, that's when you see the spell start to um, uh, the spell start to break. I didn't pick up on the twelfth strike because I initially thought because 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 um, counting the strikes, I say they do have twelve strikes, folks. Don't worry. But for some reason, I picked up on only eleven. I didn't pick up on the twelfth strike as a kid. But uh, nevertheless, clock strikes twelve. Spell is broken. Mice are back. Horses are back into mice. Uh, coachman's back into a horse. The footman's back into Bruno the dog. And and then and then you just and then and then you see the and then you see the the horse guards. They just go, they just storm through. Pumpkin destroyed. And you see the last little glitters of magic just fading away. But. Uh, but at the end of the but at the end of the day, or end of the night in this case, it was it, it was a great night for Cinderella, and and for some reason she still has the glass slipper. Now, now, the, now another big another big thing there was um, why didn't the glass slippers change after the spell broke? No. And after doing a bit of research, um, turns out it, it was um, turns out 
the glass slippers were actually made from scratch rather than things like the pumpkin becoming the coach, uh, etc. It was the glass slippers, pure magic. Uh, and this is from the this is from the notes of why the slippers didn't change. Um, the glass slippers were actually pure magic rather than created from an already existing object. So that's why the so that's why the glass slippers didn't change. Then, uh, and then, and then before we get into the next scene, Cinderella clearly talking to uh, clearly talking to uh, fairy godmother. Uh, at this point, well, fairy godmother not on screen, but um, but it, it's as if she's talking to a fairy godmother. Thank you so much for everything. But uh, then we get to the next scene where you've got, uh, I mean, how big does that bed need to be for the king? I mean, I mean, the size of that. How? How? But um. <laughs> Uh, ha having a bizarre dream, it, it is bizarre, I love it, uh, bizarre dream, uh, playing with his uh, grandkids. Uh, but, but then, of course, knock on the door, Grand Duke comes in, and um, you, know the, uh, you know the impatient side of the king that we saw earlier? That pretty much comes back into play, where he's just like, oh, You lost the maiden! Ah! And, then, and then he's got... He's the king has a sword in his hand and he's about to behead the Grand Duke and you're just like, goodness me, your majesty, calm down. <laughs> but then, and then, um, so I'm pretty sure it's at this point in the, I'm pretty sure it's at this point in the film where there's actually, uh, there was actually a meta joke um, at this point in, uh, in the film. Where, but I, was, I, I can't pinpoint what it is, um, Specifically, but uh, uh, but of course, like I said, I can't exactly sh I can't exactly show the clip because otherwise Disney are going to slam me with the copyright right out the gate. <laughs> Disney are very protective with their copyright, but uh, hey, not much I can do about it. But, um, but I say, but I say, there is definitely a meta joke in there somewhere uh, regarding it being uh, being um, uh, pr uh, princess happily ever after this that and actually right. I can't remember what the meta joke is specifically, but uh, there is definitely a meta joke in there somewhere, folks. If anybody can point it out in the comments, please let me know. I am going to be racking my brains for this one for days if I don't if I don't manage to point it out. But um, it's uh, by orders of the king, you've got the Grand Duke coming out to um, coming out across the kingdom to find. The maiden that is going to fit the glass slipper that was left behind at the ball. Uh, oh, oh, no, it's not by orders of the king. It's Prince Charming that mentions it. That he will marry whoever fits the glass slipper. And when news gets back to the Tremaine house... The amount of washing that Cinderella needs to do, I say, it's just piling on top of her, and she and she's still in this, she's still in this dreamlike state, and I'm, and um, Anastasia and Drizella, they're just like, oh, for goodness sake, wake up and smell the coffee, get the washing done, or words to that effect. But then, probably the best shot of the whole film is the evil stare. From Lady Tremaine, and then you just see, so it's just let's see, screen getting darker, and it's just focusing on the evil glare from Lady Tremaine's eyes. That for me is without a doubt the best shot of the whole film because she hears Cinderella singing the music from the ball the previous night, and she, and then she. Uh, getting getting herself ready to get um, Cinderella looks like she's getting herself ready to tr try on the glass up because we, we all we all know where it's going but uh, we'll get to that shortly but um, was it the the last was it was it the last little nitpick I have for this is uh, yeah I mean yes you see it you see it in the mirror uh, Cinderella singing um, Jack and Gus point out that Lady Tremaine 
is there, locks, I say, turns the key, locks the door, and then closes it. But that's not how locking a door works. I mean, if you were going to lock the door, you would have the key on the other side of the door, close it, then lock it, and then put the key in your pocket. I mean, I, was like, I, was like, I, I know it's, I was like, again, another, another bit of plot convenience there, but... Basic locking, guys. If, if you're gonna lock a door, close it, then lock it. Goodness me. But, um... But yeah, that's somewhat to ensure that... That's, that is essentially to ensure that Cinderella is not going to be able to try on the glass slipper. And then... The, and then the climax between Jack, Gus, with more slapstick, with the help of uh, fellow mice and animal friends, uh, breaking all sorts of uh, plates, mugs, and everything in between. Um, then, and then uh, the and then the birds manage to get Bruno, uh, the horse major finally gets Bruno's attention, and it's a case of, uh, Bruno's just like, Lucifer, causing trouble, that does it! And then, whoo, boy, uh, that, that moment where you just like, um, where you see, that moment where you see, uh, Bruno essentially force Lucifer out of the window, does Lucifer survive? Given how high up, given how high the fall was, does Lucifer survive the fall? But then, of course, you've always got that thing of cats always landing on their feet. But the way Lucifer was falling, I don't think he landed on his feet on this occasion. So, kind of goes against the whole cats landing on their feet uh, myth. Uh, which reminds me, have Mythbusters, have, which reminds me, uh, have Mythbusters already done that one there uh, about cats always landing on their feet? Beats me. Um, but, uh, but, um, um, but Anastasia and Drizella, they try the sl they try on the slipper, and it is just, um, it's either the slipper's too small, or their feet are just way too big. Or maybe a combination of both. Um, but, uh, Jack, Jack and Gus, they manage to retrieve the key, they get Cinderella out, um, Late and and the Grand Duke is about to leave after Lady Tremaine says there's nobody there's no there's nobody else in in the house blatantly lying to him in the process but then and then we hear Cinderella's voice and the Grand Duke is just like yes one more maiden to try and 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 Lady Tremaine is just no 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 she's a figment of your imagination Grand Duke responds my orders were clear every maiden. And then uh, the Grand Duke's footman comes to bring the glass slipper forward. But, um, but then, then w just one last piece of irredeemable evilness from Lady Tremaine. Trips the footman, glass slipper shatters, and the Grand Duke's just like, No! The one thing we had! But uh, lo and behold... Cinderella has the second, has the other glass slipper, and the look on, the look on Lady Tremaine's face, just, oh, priceless. Just like, what? How? <laughs> but, uh, but the Grand Duke celebrating, the mice are celebrating, the, the glass slipper fits, and that's pretty much it. Um, and, that, and that's it. Wedding bells chime. Prince Charming and Cinderella are married. Uh, right, I say rice. So, uh, I say rice thrown over them as is sort of like a, a tradition. And even the mice uh, throw some rice as well. And of course, uh, one last similarity to one last similarity to Snow White. You've got and other films previously. You've got the um, you've, you've got the choir singing like the the main theme of uh, the film. Uh, Snow White, someday my prince will come. Pinocchio, when you wish upon a star. 
Um, and then you've got Cinderella, dream is a wish your heart makes. Um, they share a kiss in the carriage. They all live happily ever after. Book closes. And there we go. Hmm. So there we go. That is uh, that is uh, Cinderella, folks. Um, so yeah, um, like I said, I haven't done this. I haven't done this format, uh, like uh, going through the notes throughout the, uh, that we've taken. Um, so, uh, so what what are, what other notes did you have while I'm, while I'm on the subject before we get into uh, the main the main part you guys are waiting for the scores? What other notes did you what what other notes did you have throughout the film? Um. To be honest, it's definitely one of my favourite films. So, um, I just like I, I don't. It was one of the first like um, Disney princess films. So I like how just mm-hmm. like traditional it is, and just how magical yeah. it is, and it's just sort of like I don't. Know, I, I just absolutely love it, and the remake I love even more. So, like, it's just this classical story, and it's mm-hmm. honestly like yeah. To be honest, I couldn't really criticise it too much because I just absolutely love it. So yeah, but yes, <laughs> yeah. Let's say, let's say, let's say, d- d- definitely hard to argue with that. Uh, I mean, you know what? When it comes around to the remakes, I'll make sure I'll make sure you're doing the Cinderella remake with me. I'll make I'll say, <laughs> so. Th- so there we go. We've, so there we go. We've already got one of my first guests for the remake sorted out, folks. Don't worry. <laughs> but like I said, the remakes won't be happening until after I've done the uh, the Pixar films. But, but like but like I say that I say that probably I say I say it's still a long way to go before we get to that because because um because uh, because like I said uh, a, a while back on my channel uh, that this Kingdom of Isolation uh, this is a long term project this ain't going anywhere there's going to be more <laughs> Disney films coming out there's going to be more Pixar films coming out there's going to be more live action remakes and when they're coming out you can guarantee I'm going to be covering them right here on the channel in the Kingdom of Isolation. So, uh, yes, now we get into the main event, the scores. Now, it was very, it was very hard to, it was very, it was very hard to criticize the film, like you've just, like you've just said, and you've yeah. just said it yourself, it's one of your favorite Disney films of all time. And, uh, and uh, me watching it back, it's, it's easy to see why. Um, I mean, the story. I mean, like you said, very simple, very traditional, but but like I say, the uh, I say the um, I say one or two, one or two plot, one or two continuity errors and plot holes here and there. Mm. Um, I say that that's what knocks the story down to a nine. Otherwise, I'd have definitely given it a ten. But I say I say, but still a nine, definitely not bad for the story. Yeah. Um, I say the characters, I the characters I also gave a nine because um, I say. Um, I say, d- delving deeper into uh, Prince Charming's character specifically doesn't really he doesn't really show up that much, but no. uh, but, but at the same time doesn't really show much of a personality for the time yeah. that he is on screen. Yeah. But but, but 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 everything else as far as the characters is concerned is just essentially spot on, especially especially with uh, Lady Tremaine. I was like. Definitely up there for me as one of the most irredeemable characters in all of film. <laughs> and it's not very often I throw that word around. Not very often I throw irredeemable that off. Not very often I throw irredeemable around. But, um, let's say the, let's say the visuals definitely, definitely had to give a, give a 10. Couldn't fault them in any way. Um, let's say the, um, and then the uh, the soundtrack. Um, I had to let's say the soundtrack. I had to give an eight. Uh, I mean, don't get me wrong; it's a good soundtrack. But um, but again, I've I've mentioned it. I've mentioned it uh, previously on my channel that um, when it comes to the soundtrack, I normally uh, I no- my 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 go to as far as the soundtrack is concerned is the film score. But um, but like I say, of of all the of all the music and the songs that uh, people remember from the, from the film, uh, I mean you've got, I mean, the top three they're gonna bring up, Bibbity Bobbity Boo, that's gonna be at the top of the list. <laughs> yeah. Um, then probably Sing Sweet Nightingale number two, and then Dream Is a Wish Your Heart Makes at number three. Let's say those are the three that people are gonna talk about the most. 
when it when it comes to um, talking about the soundtrack for uh, the film. I mean, so this is love. A little, I mean, somewhat forgettable, but at the same time, it is pivotal for the film. But um, but like, but as far as the score is concerned, not not much about the score actually stands out apart from like um, apart from like music stings here and there, like. Like I mentioned earlier with uh, Lady Tremaine, the, um, the evil glare, uh, and when we see her on screen for the, when when we see her in her bedroom for the first time, things like that. But um, I, I couldn't I couldn't see I couldn't see myself giving it any higher than uh, mm. uh, than an eight. Um, but the legacy of this film, yeah, goodness me, the legacy that is definitely a ten because. Mm-hmm. Because, like I've mentioned before, it brought it brought the um, it brought Disney back on its feet, and um, some of the other some of the other pieces of legacy this film has is that it has featured numerous times throughout the uh, the Kingdom Hearts series, and um, and I've I've mentioned Kingdom Hearts before, folks. Uh, I, I even mentioned it in my uh, I even mentioned it in my Nightmare Before Christmas um, review. But uh, was a uh, quite some time later, they also had um, two director video sequels for Cinderella: uh, Dreams Come True and A Twist in Time. Uh, Dreams Come True, I've heard, is not that great, but A Twist in Time is definitely one of the better. Um, Disney sequels, given the fact that a lot, a lot of the more dedicated Disney fans, to say the least, have uh, stated that the Disney sequels aren't exactly the best. But I say there are a handful out there that are actually really good. Let's um, let's say Cinderella, uh, say Dreams Come True and A Twist in Time. Those are the two Cinderella sequels that um, uh, that came out, and um, this is one of the many Disney films that was uh, selected for preservation in the national film registry it was it was um wow. yeah it was in 2018 that it was uh, selected for uh, uh preservation and uh, talking of films that were selected um towards the tail end of last year shrek dreamworks i know it's not disney but <laughs> But I know, oh but but Shrek was selected to was selected to be added into really? into the uh, National Film Registry. I mean, <laughs> I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, goodness me! I've 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 just I've just realised. Goodness me! I feel so old right now. Shrek is twenty <laughs> years old this year. No, I feel, it's not. I oh I know. God. I feel so old mentioning that now. <laughs> But um, oh, but uh, but yeah, that's a that's a. Let's just put it this way: if you have if if your film is if a film is selected for preservation in the National Film Registry, that's when you know it's a very important film in yeah. in the history of entertainment. So yeah, I say I definitely can't. I say. That I say that is I mean definitely a ten just for that like I said the the sequels and of course um, being featured in uh, Kingdom Hearts in in the Kingdom Hearts series on on a number of occasions uh, and also and also like I mentioned like various um, various excuse me uh, various Cinderella uh, ver- various Cinderella films uh, like uh, things like uh, Ever After and like like I mentioned earlier my personal favorite uh, a Cinderella story. Uh, I, I I I know I'm not the sort of guy that uh, the, the film is sort of like aiming towards, but I've no, just that doesn't matter I, I, exactly. I've just found that every time it's been on TV, I've just been like, yeah, yeah. let's watch it, and I'm not e- I'm not even ashamed to admit that it is. You shouldn't be. I was like, I was like, it's 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 up there as um, I, was like, I mean it's. Would you call it a chick flick or a rom com, or would you call it a combination of both? Yeah, I'd say it's more of a combination. You're right there. Yeah. I was like, I was like, I was like that's one of my favourites from that sort of genre, folks. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. So um. So 
So, uh, are, so, um, are, are there any of those scores that you would um, that you would change? Uh, what, what would you have given those? Um, uh, the scores for like each of the sections, the story, characters, etc. What would you have given for each of those sections, as far as the scores are all concerned? Very, all very much the same. Like, like music-wise, I feel like obviously it's, it's an older film, so mm-hmm. you can't really do as go that much further. But I would have loved some more like sort of singing and things like that. And, mm-hmm. yeah. But because I just I just love musicals in general, general. So any music in like in any form is just amazing. But other than that, it's like I literally gave all the same scores, so, yeah. Fair play. So, yeah, um, so taking all that into the uh, equation, 9, 9, 10, 8, 10. So, we have, um, so I, I, ran, I ran the calculations before we started recording, and we end up for our first post, for our first, for our first post-package film, and, um, was like, so for our first post World War Two era film, and we have a total score of ninety two percent, which puts it fourth on the scoreboard. So, yeah. not not bad for not bad for a return to form for Disney. Let's say, yeah. let's say, um, let's say, and it's let's say just below Pinocchio, believe it or not. <laughs> Oh which, which, uh, which, which actually got which, uh, which got a score of ninety four percent. Snow White with ninety six. Fantasia, as it stands, still the only film with a perfect one hundred percent. But, but that could all change over the next little while because I've got because I've got four more films for the fifties um, uh, to cover. Uh, that'll be uh, the next episode. Will be Alice in Wonderland. Then I've got Peter Pan, Lady in the Tramp, and Sleeping Beauty. Guests are already sorted for that. Um, then we've got three films from the '60s: 101 Dalmatians, Sword in the Stone, and The Jungle Book. I've got Sword in the Stone and Jungle Book uh, sorted. I've got someone penciled in for. Um, I've got someone penciled in for 101 Dalmatians, but if I, um, but. Um, if anything, if anything happens, um, uh, I sh- uh, one thing I should have said before we started, folks, uh, I did initially have somebody, I did have somebody else in place to do Cinderella with me, but they ended up with family commitments, which were going to keep them occupied for the next few weeks. So, uh, so like the grand, so like the grand duke, I had to scour the kingdom to <laughs> find somebody to uh, fill that slot, and Ellie was the. Uh, no pun intended. Perfect fit for that Cinderella. slot. Cinderella. <laughs> yeah. Cinderella. Yeah. Yeah. I say. Yeah. I say. Yeah. Ellie's the Cinderella in this situation. <laughs> if you think about it. <laughs> yeah. But um. But yeah. I say. I say. If. I say. Um. I say. Um, well, like I said, I've got somebody penciled in for 101 Dalmatians. But if that needs changed, I've got somebody. I've got somebody that I can uh, count on to be able to make the review happen. So uh, yeah, that is it, folks. Uh, I say, Ellie, as always, massive thanks for massive thanks for uh, uh, for joining me for this. It's always a pleasure to have you in the Kingdom of Isolation. Oh, thank you so much for having me. Yeah. So yeah, and uh, if you if you guys enjoyed it, uh, hit the thumbs up, and if you want to be a dream chaser like us, you can uh, hit the subscribe button at the bottom, uh, click the bell to join the Dream Chasers notification squad, so you don't miss anything I do on this channel. And, and like I said earlier, playthrough of Spider-Man Miles Morales is going to be getting underway very, very soon. I've been very excited to play it. And also, uh, next Kingdom of Isolation episode is going to be Alice in Wonderland. That is that is going to be very interesting for me to, mm. uh, uh, to cover. But I'm very much looking forward to it regardless. So, all that being said, uh, we will see you guys next time in the Kingdom of Isolation. See you later, guys!